So this is the season of move. We have Ghost Spider that just came out, which is launching a whole new season with a bunch of move cards in it, reviving that archetype. We have a two energy, three cost on reveal. The last card you played moves here, which fits really great into a lot of decks, especially those move decks, because it can combo with those other move cards that are out there. Combos with, you know, Vulture, with Human Torch, with Dagger, with Miles Morales. There's a lot of cards that this will combo with and give it more power and more utility, but it'll also be good in some other decks that just want to move around some cards to maybe juke your opponent on where they're going to play. Uh, there's some good stuff with like Dr. Octopus that you can play with this. So let's take a look at some of the decks and kind of go a little bit in depth here. So the traditional move archetype deck, uh, I call this just move because it's just all the move cards that there are thrown into one deck with a wave tech card in here just to counter any Kitty Pride or Sarah decks out there, which are pretty rampant. Uh, but this deck, you have uh, all the move cards, Human Torch, Dagger, like I said before, Vulture. And then you have Ghost Spider, which in this instance kind of acts as a cheaper Doctor Strange where you can just pull the last card you played, whether that is a Vulture, whether that's a Dagger, um, allowing you to just buff up those cards a little bit more. And then you got the top end Heimdall. So if you want to play Wave and another two cost on turn five, you have the big Heimdall play to push all your cards and get that extra power. So this deck, really solid. Um, another deck that is really solid is the Surfer version. So this is running a lot of the same cards that are getting buffed up, but this one also runs like a Brood and Silver Surfer. Uh, so to combo with those three cost cards, but along with it, you have those move cards. You, I teched in Storm in here. Uh, you could tech in Wave or some other cards. Wave, maybe not so good because you also want to play out a bunch of cards in your last turn or two or three cards, um, especially with Miles, which gets discounted. but could be good if you're running to a lot of uh, the kitty decks out there. Uh, you could also tech in some other three cost card that you're just going to buff up a surfer that's good, a Maximus, um, something else that's big. I figured it might be okay uh, against kitty decks to run Storm uh, because it locks down one of those locations a little bit early and they can't really put too much power into it early with the kitty trying to get buffed up. Uh, next deck is a more tempo based oriented deck that's called moving with ghosts which is just ghost spider move deck it's not anything i I put a doc ock in here which i think is really fun uh you pull out a lot of your opponent's cards you have a shang chi in case you want to blow them up or you have ghost spider to pull your doc ock out of that lane if they committed way too much and maybe you didn't have the shang chi in hand and you just want to pull that 10 power over and win two other lanes so this deck really fun it also runs the kind of same move cards dagger vulture and uh those ones get buffed up so a lot of fun there uh then if we get into a little bit more on the side of uh interesting decks i tried this one out for a bit i think it's kind of fun um it's a take on kitty pride and shuri mixed together uh, it does have that ghost spider to try and pull like your Doc Ock maybe to a different lane after you get it big. Uh, you can fill up a lane, uh, move it out with ghost spider so you can buff up your Angel even more. It's running just some big cards. It's got the bounce package with Beast so you can uh, play out some cards, bounce them back, and get ready to play them for zero uh, or for one cost if you're doing that. A lot of fun. I will say that it, since it's running like two archetypes mixed together, it's a little bit difficult to navigate and know when you're going to go one direction or the other. Uh, but it does have the added benefit of if you're able to get like, like a Shuri into Doc Ock, um, if your opponent ended up playing a wave because they saw you playing Kitty a bunch or a couple times, they uh, might be surprised by just a Taskmaster winning the game or something. So uh, I think it's a good counter to maybe some wave decks out there. You can also, if you see wave coming, just dump your hand, dump your hit monkey and whatever. Don't play your Kitty Pride out because it's going to get waved and not be able to play it out. So this is a lot of fun. I will say that Ghost Spider seems a little bit less relevant in this deck. Uh, it didn't come into as much use since all the other cards in this package are just really strong. So a lot of times you're not going to be using the Ghost Spider. So that's why this one's a little bit less recommended for this video. Uh, lastly, I put together just a Spider-Verse deck. This deck is a lot of fun because it's running all of the spiders. It's running Ghost Spider, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Spider-Woman. And 
Uh, I've threw in some other fun cards in here. Uh, it's kind of a lockdown like package just because it felt pretty good with the four spiders in there. Uh, but then I threw in Juggernaut, Kingpin, and Stegron uh, just as some extra fun. Uh, this one, a little bit copium to be good, but still a lot of fun moving some stuff around, getting that Kingpin to smack some cards. Uh, I will say that probably if you wanted to up this deck a little bit, take out the Kingpin, take out the Stegron, throw in some better four cost cards that you're going to throw into a storm lane to win that out. Um, and you're going to be a little bit better off. But overall, this deck is actually performing okay. Maybe not a top tier deck, but a fun deck for sure. Uh, let's hop into some games, see how these play out. So this deck, the absolute high roll with the just move deck is you want to play multiple man into Hulkbuster or multiple man into Iron Fist Hulkbuster. You want to be able to move that multiple man that's buffed up. That's the high roll. Got to skip because of the collapse mine. With a move deck, you need the utility of moving cards around. We're just going to dump some cards out here and then move the vulture with the iron fist. They got some value from the collapse mine with the death. I think we can actually win middle with a crazy Heimdall play on the last turn. So we're going to move vulture into Atlantis, then we're going to spider to the right. And then we are going to Heimdall on the final turn. So now the question is, with Moon Girl, are they skipping here for a She-Hulk game or something like that? I think they might be. I think we're just playing Wave Middle. We have to order it with Ghost Spider, then Wave, so that it pulls the Vulture, which is the last card that we played. Killmonger actually frees up some space for us, meaning that we can make another play here, which is great. Um, this means that we can play Heimdall on the right, which will give us a lead in every single lane. He can only play one card. Um, I think we have enough to beat Doctor Doom. That would be 20 mid. Uh, this is 18 plus 6. Yeah. All right. They're out of here. So this next game here, we have similar kind of start. You want to play out multiple man, hopefully draw Hulkbuster, maybe get the Iron Fist going. We also have Doctor Strange, so we don't need the Iron Fist with the Hulkbuster. So if you don't know this, uh, ooh, Asteroid M is really good with the move deck. If you didn't know this, uh, Iron Fist works with Hulkbuster. All right, so he's also move deck, trying to get some move value. With Craven on Asteroid M, anything he throws there, it's going to give us some extra value. Okay, so we have Iron Fist. Unfortunately, we can't do anything with the Altar of Death. I guess we could strange some cards over there or cloak them later. I guess we're not playing Iron Fist. Maybe we're just blowing up our multiple man, getting some extra value. Multiple man's not going to be super useful for us. All right, so we have the dagger. A little bit awkward, I will say. Could always Doctor Strange. Oof. Cloak, Doctor Strange. Iron Fist. Okay. We're just getting some extra energy here. Not that we really need it. They're playing a Miles version of the deck with Human Torch. Interesting what they would cut. Probably the multiple man package. I think that's the first thing a lot of people cut. Should go pop. Alright, so... We do have 10 power over here. I don't know, maybe I should play Dagger Hulkbuster. Seems okay. Ooh, 
Ooh. It's going for that 16 power human torch. All right, 32 power we have to beat. I think we can beat that. We have a 10 power. Oh man, this guy is going to be huge. He's just game of my life. All right, well, nice try. Let's leave the 10 power over there. He could play nothing. Yep. Victory. All right, so with this deck, similar to the other deck, this deck is the Surfer Spider deck. You don't want to be dumping out your Iron Fist turn one. We do have potential plays here. We have a dagger. Could just play the Iron Fist, I guess. And then we just play dagger. Um, next turn. Or if we draw a Vulture, play Vulture. Storm is not bad. <clears throat> it is a lockdown list that we're facing, so I don't really want to storm myself. Now, we did just play dagger, so this is a, a consideration. <clears throat> we could play out cloak as well. Save Miles for the final turn. Dagger's getting huge. There's that storm. So I think we can do this, plus this, plus this. We're going to pull his nebula out of here. This is the game plan here. Yeah, okay. Will will have 10 power here. Of two plus whatever else he plays. And then he'll have to be scared of Heimdall. He doesn't know that we're not running Heimdall. <clears throat> yeah, so we're guaranteed to pull the Nebula. Lock up mid. I think this might just be a leave from him. Even though he's spider man our only playable place. We have locked up two locations, and there isn't a card that gets 8 plus power on the right. He's got a combined total of 8 power right now <clears throat> against our 31. Should be a free 1 cube. The power of Ghost Spider. Oh, he has Jeff. Yeah, he moves Jeff into the photo location. He could potentially win. But it's really hard to win mid unless he runs Shang-Chi. And even still... He's technically at 2 power moving Jeff. 5 power with Shang-Chi goes to a tiebreaker. And he needs to play Shang-Chi plus 3 power to win the tiebreaker. Doesn't have it. Alright, we got a good start with Craven. We have Dagger as well. Dagger's a little bit better towards the end of the game. Alright, we have Nebula. Gotta start playing into that location. We do have Polaris the Pullet out of there. So maybe I should have pulled it. Alright, maybe we pull the lizard over here. Seems okay. Or the ninja. Either one I'm down with. Okay. Limbo. This thing's a little bit weird. Right, we're pulling one of three cards. The ninja, okay. I'm just trying to keep that nebula at bay here. Alright, so now we're playing... Dagger and Cloak. I think I might leave one spot. I 
for a potential storm play. We're getting the DC value. We're getting dagger plus craven value over here. Gonna lower that lizard. I think I'd snap him if I didn't want to see the game played out. Maybe I'll snap him anyway. Oh, snapped him a little too early. Maybe he won't. That snap might have actually been perfect. Because now we play the Storm Surfer. So we get the Storm buffed, adding four power over here, subtracting four power, adding eight power over here. I don't think they could win <clears throat> if we steal this. All right, looks like we stole it. Nice. They never saw the limbo getting stormed away here. Surfer to the victory. Nice Spider-Man. Give us our four cubes. Oomp. Nice. Thank you everyone for watching this far into the video. Still here. Sure to check me out on Twitch and YouTube. And follow me on Twitter. Do all the things. But uh, thank you for watching. This deck is a little bit more of a for fun deck. You could definitely improve it. Create some sort of lockdown list. I wanted to just have a full Spider-Man, Ghost Spider, Spider-Man, Miles, Spider-Woman deck. I wanted to have a little bit of fun with Kingpin as well. Um, this deck does all those things. Um, I did just see that we're at three crazy locations here. I think we're playing Kingpin. No, I don't know what we're doing. Um, wait and see what's going on here. Carnage, okay. We have seven power Carnage. We have Doc Ock we could play on a Sinister London, maybe. Could be a win. It's got five cards in hand. I still can't really play anything here. Locations are too weird. Doc Ock and Spider Woman Nebula. Hope it's enough. Could just Doc Ock the Space Throne and then Spider Woman Bar Sinister, but. Alright. This is fine. This guarantees our Doctor to go Space Throne. So as long as we pull something smaller than 10, that isn't Shang-Chi. We should be okay. I think we won. Actually, it really depends on how much he pulls on Sinister 1 as well. Professor X. Ugh. Okay, he got a goblin. Okay, we won. Because this will deactivate his warpath. Let me pull this in here. Game over. Game over. Take that. <clears throat> yes. Can't even play Jeff. This location's full. Free one cube. With playing out one card the entire game. Alright. And now on to the actual final game after the troll locations last game. Hopefully, we will get some more fair locations to be able to play out our game plan. We didn't get any of our one drops, which is generally a big downside to this deck. This deck does very, very well. Lockdown decks in general, when you get your one drops early, you can play them into a storm lane, get some extra value. Because you really want to win that storm lane, and then you want to just win one of the other two using some of your cheating antics. All right, let's just... 
play Polaris, just get the five power out here. Okay, Zabu. What does this tell us? Luke Cage Zabu. Probably tells us that he is a gamer. Wong. I kind of want to storm Limbo. Ironheart. Okay. So if I want to storm Limbo, I'm going to have to win some lanes here. So far, we've had a lot of fun. Oh, he filled up a lane. All right, I lied. I forgot Spider-Woman didn't work with Luke Cage. But it's okay. We're still winning. We have the Storm Limbo play. Storm plus Kingpin. He gets to lose the Kingpin without actually losing a Kingpin. If he plays Arnhem this turn, he would win, but he did not. See you later. Nice Knoll. <clears throat> if you wait until the end of the season, uh, you're going to be able to put in two extra cards into your move decks, Silk and Spider-Man 29, which are actually insane cards. Silk moves every time a card is played into the location. Spider-Man 2099 will destroy a card anytime it, the first time it moves to a new location, which means... Is really strong with Ghost Spider. You're able to uh, play that out all in one turn if you play it on turn six. So you can even play Go Spider Man, Ghost Spider, choose the lane it goes into. Um, but yeah, it should be a fun combo. Hopefully, when the season comes out, you'll be able to see those cards in action.